So, once the top layer is ignited, the sintering begins. The progress of sintering process after the ignition of the top layer of sinter bed is shown below schematically. So, there is a um, so when the process, I think the probably it can be understand much better way from this figure uh, how these zones. So, in the starting you have a green uh, pellet once this uh, under the ignition hood uh, this sintering start from the top it comes it comes out that. So, this is already a now top one is a sintered one, but because the wind box are located at the bottom. So, it is sucking the air the fresh air uh, atmospheric one from the top. So, due to the forced convection we will talk a little bit about the heat transfer later. Um, so, the top sintered layer get cooled because the 25 degree or 30 degree Celsius air is entering from the top and so which cooled it down the um, sin, uh, top layer and <coughs> the sintered uh, and suppose the sinter which has made uh, become or we this is actually showing uh, somewhere here the intermediate region. So, like this layer is already sintered and became cold and this is getting sintered. So, this is the uh, <coughs> or this is also already hot and getting sintered and the combustion front has already moved forward after sintering this. So, this is a hot sinter uh, and the hot air now is coming there because this is a hot already sinter and assisting supplying the oxygen to this front uh, the preheated hot airs are coming in this one and this is a combustion zone. Now, from the combustion zone whatever air is coming out they are quite hot and they are under suction. So, <coughs> what and below the combustion zone all the pellets they are green pellets. So, what it does it preheat the green pellet uh, uh, in this combustion zone. So, mostly calcination and those uh, uh, thing occurs in this these are already actually preheated because the temperature is very high. So, calcination and other thing is occurring in this, uh, this zone and when it passes uh, uh, from this uh, pellet get colder and colder. Uh, so, temperature keeps on dropping you can see the temperature uh, this is the cold one. Uh, so, temperature actually it should start from here. So, 25 degree it uh, keeps on in increasing because this flame front has traveled to here and when it reaches to the combustion zone that is the maximum temperature which you are having around 1300 degree Celsius. And then these uh, gases start cooling down because you have the cold pe pellet. So, they these gets heated up and uh, because the temperature is still very high in this region about 1100 uh, or so. So, uh, decomposition of carbonate uh, occurs in this region and, uh, and below that temperature uh, then uh, because this is all uh, endothermic reaction. So, temperature further drops and as the temperature is dropping then when the temperature is around for 5, uh, five 600 or like that you have a drying zone. So, like a uh, uh, pellet gets dry or any other chemically bonded water and other thing comes uh, out from this. And uh, in fact, whatever moisture is there that also comes out um, in this region during drying zone. So, and temperature continuously decreases. So, what has happened um, because this zone is still quite hot about 4 500 degrees Celsius, the, um, uh, uh, the moisture evaporation takes place, but once this moisture evaporation uh, moisture now is coming with the gases over here. So, it and he, um, at the next layer is a cold one. So, recondensation of the moisture occurs here. 
So, in at one place if the evaporation is occurring above this, but here recondensation of the moisture is occurring and so pellet get quite wet actually at the bottom and even water can come out from the, um, from the bottom in condensation and temperature drops uh, uh, quite low in this region at the uh, bottom. And this, this is the way and because this is moving, so uh, the top one keep on getting sintered and the uh, flame is uh, traveling downwards. So, the next layer keep on getting sintered uh, and that get sintered then it travels further down. So, plastic sinters you have and then you have a dry zone as we discussed and by the time it uh, <coughs> comes out it is all gets sintered. So, this is showing more about the, that how the sinter bed look, look like. And if we talk a little bit about the uh, heat transfer here, so that is the thing which we discussed the condensation is uh, occurring uh, after that in this zone because the moisture which has evaporated uh, recondensing in the uh, lower temperature zone, <coughs> you have a sintering zone about 1200 degree C, then you have a heat front cooling zone and the top one really from the atmospheric air get cooled down below this 40 degree. And so, mostly you are having a force convection uh, here, conduction and radiation uh, play this small role in this region, but not that one is mostly the force convection if you are aware about the heat transfer. Uh, then about this I am talking, if not, not to worry too much about it. Um, <coughs> so, the main, now one important thing if to look at this, uh, we are having at the flame front. If flame front is going to continue like this, then it is going to really and that temperature 13, 1400 degree Celsius and that is going to damage the strand and the heart. Um, and so, the main thing in the sintering to operate the sintering machine in a proper way and a good quality sinter, it is important that burn through point of the sinter making should end as close as possible. <coughs> so, sinter making should end as close as possible of the last wind box. So, this is shown here. <coughs> so, this is a sinter where bed already sintered and you are saying this is a sort of a uh, flame front. So, it should finish the full sintering should finish almost at the end of the last wind box and where the discharging occurs. So, there is no damage to the center strand and immediately once uh, this finishes, it uh, falls down and the uh, center breaker is there. So, top material, material is usually cool, but this material is a very high temperature one, but it is better to have that high temperature centered one and it breaks down uh, by the center breaker. So, this is a very important uh, uh, thing for the sintering process. So, whatever people do they always talk about the burn through point. So, this is uh, quite important. So, once uh, this sintering is over then uh, it comes about the cooling and uh, screening of the sinter. So, which uh, you have seen those uh, sinter uh, screen one there in the figure. So, at the end of the burn through point end of the great rotating hammer break down the discharge center into a smaller size and which are screened and cooled. So, plus uh, 15 millimeter goes to the blast furnace and this goes as a hearth layer uh, and uh, below the 10 millimeter uh, goes to the 
as a center return again to make the green pellets. So, some uh, correlation has been proposed for the center productivity um, in this form. So, where P is the productivity of the center machine, um, B is the bed depth excluding the hearth layer. So, it is about the green pellet depth and H is the width of strand and B is the speed of strand and that is in meter per minute. This is a bulk density of the mixture uh, green pellets and RF is the amount of return fines generated and which has been put into this. So, in turn power and y is the yield of the center from the raw mix. Based on that one can calculate the productivity of the center and typical mass and heat balance uh, on that sintering process is given in this one. So, the mass balance about 40 to 45 percent or goes in 2 to 3 percent fine dust about 5 percent coke and about 5 to 6 percent water actually it goes and the return center return the return fines which also comes it is about 20 to 22 percent. So, it is a quite a amount, amount, high amount of center returns actually you put it into that and then you have also the <coughs> machine return the very fine which is uh, coming underneath of that uh, machine um, that also constitute about 12 to 15 percent machine return. So, these are the input and <coughs> the output of course, the return center blast furnace center about 35 to 40 percent you get it and loss of volatile 13 to 18 percent and about 15 percent machine returns as output of the process. Uh, which gives the total mass balance of the sintering process and for the heat balance we have uh, this. So, in the heat balance uh, 80 to 85 percent heat comes from the coke and the uh, uh, flue dust constitute that uh, about 7 percent, combustion of sulfur about 0.5, ignition of the gases um, also through the burner is about 6 percent and the formation of uh, Fe 3 or 4. So, from hematite to magnetite it is a exothermic process essentially. So, about uh, 1 percent comes from that and total heat loss. Uh, so, heat loss to the environment machines and various other places is about uh, 7 to 9 percent waste gases take away most of this, uh, uh, this heat of the order of 25 percent. Sensible heat in the center is about 25 percent like uh, dehydration and calcination constitute again quite a big amount 20 to 23 percent. So, you can imagine how much heat is going into this one and you are saving coke. Uh, that much coke in the blast furnace to get rid of this action. So, always it is good to put uh, uh, flux uh, with the center. Uh, moisture remo uh, removal around 15 percent and other miscellaneous and the, uh, which goes at the heat loss. So, this shows the overall heat uh, balance of the sintering process. Now, we will talk a bit about the constituent uh, uh, role of constituents in sintering. So, as you know we have moisture uh, during the granulation process. So, moisture content should be optimum during sintering process usually 6 to 8 percent. Um, usually in sintering process it is about 6 percent, but um, and pelletization it is a little higher it goes around 8 percent or so. So, um, so it is a good amount. So, lower or higher than this moisture content adversely affect the sintering operation. So, moisture content can affect the dust generation if it is low. So, quite a lot dust 
will generate and then it will affect the bed permeability and very high also it does. So, if you look at this uh, figure as the moisture content is increasing you can see the uh, crushing strength of the green pellets it is uh, increases up to a certain moisture content. So, 9 or below 9 percent, but after that it is start decreasing and the uh, fine uh, size have uh, higher uh, strength than the coarser size pellet. Um, so, but this is true in terms of when we are doing pelletization, but similar argument uh, is held for the sintering also. So, because crushing strength uh, is very important um, when you are putting on the, uh, on the center strand the uh, bed of the pellet the suction is very high and under that suction it must withstand that pressure drop. So, they, they should not uh, lose their shape otherwise it will affect the permeability and uh, higher suction pressures you need a um, and this uh, probably will lead to many other problem. So, crushing, uh, crushing strength that is where uh, this factor comes into picture. Um, same thing about the drop strength to which the moisture content, but you cannot have a very high moisture just to that um, you need a reasonable drop strength. So, you can uh, choose from that. So, 8 percent for the pellet is a, a good one. For coke uh, bridge, so this should have a correct size distribution otherwise uneven localized heating may occur because these all are fines and uh, when you are looking at uh, uh, this uh, particles um, 2 millimeter and 3 millimeter particle. So, the way heat would be released it is sort of a localized uh, uh, in the within the pellet. So, 2 millimeter will give a different amount of heat and 3 millimeter will give a different amount of heat. So, that will give a different temperature gradient and that will affect the structure uh, of the center and the phase formation. So, which is not good that is why the correct side distribution is very necessary for the coke breeze. Um, the more coke breeze will contribute in more formation of phthalate. Now, as we know the coke uh, is uh, associated with S and S has silica in it and which uh, form that ions uh, phthalate and silicate this. And formation of phthalate actually reduces the reducibility of this inter which really we do not want in the blast furnace. Uh, however, it increases the strength of it, uh, it, but the reducibility is much more important. So, more coke will fa uh, facilitate formation of more ma also the more coke facilitate formation of more magnetite and bustite phases thus decreasing the degree of oxidation which is also not good. Uh, the figure uh, this figure shows uh, qualitatively how the coke uh, percentage of coke rate is um, affecting the various property. So, as you increase the coke percentage you can see the re uh, reducibility is decreasing which is due to the formation of phthalate phase and degree of oxidation also decreases formation of magnetite and uh, bustite phase and uh, uh, center string though increases, but because these two are reducing. So, these are not, not good uh, for the blast furnace uh, as a feed when we go there and we had discussed few of them during blast furnace uh, description, but we will come again on this. So, proper uh, uh, percentage of the coke is also uh, quite important uh, in this center. And limestone, limestone is very important as uh, we said it is better to use limestone during sintering than uh, uh, in the blast furnace. So, you can uh, save the coke. So, limestone or dolomite uh, 
uh, is added to increase the basicity. Usually basicity if uh, you do not have a, dolo a dolomite or uh, other magnesium based uh, flux, uh, then you give the basicity based on the ratio of CaO and SiO2. But if you have a magnesium based flux also then because magnesium is also a basic uh, in character like calcium. So, these are combined and then you put the ratio in the combined form uh, Ca plus MgO divided by SeO2. So, uh, this increase the basicity of the center uh, when you are putting uh, any flux. So, naturally this content is increasing. So, you will increase the basicity. So, depending on this ratio center has been classified under acidic or basic. So, acidic center is when no limestone is added. So, naturally uh, the ratio would be 0 of this when no limestone is there and major phase in that case is phalli. So, uh, you, may, you will get a stronger center, but poor reducibility. So, uh, in some cases it may require, but mostly it is avoided. So, the basic practice nowadays is about the basic center. So, basic center these uh, flux center are further classified into again various uh, uh, basicity based on their uh, basicity ratio. So, cell flux center where the ratio of the basis uh, 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 this basic and uh, acidic uh, compound is about 1 we say basicity 1. So, so and in terms of CoSiO2 if it is about 0.8. So, so this actually uh, you call, uh, call the cell flux center and that increase uh, slag volume in this case is in increased uh, in the blast furnace because uh, uh, you uh, have to really add um, extra flux and things to compensate uh, as from blast furnace coke and other places which is coming. Silicates are replaced by uh, low melting glass uh, here in the center, uh, reducing the strength of the center, but increasing the reducibility. Superflux center, the basicity of this center vary between 1 and 3. So, depending upon the amount of addition of the limestone, you can, uh, if you add more limestone, certainly you are taking care of the extra silica which is getting liberated in the blast furnace uh, through coke. Uh, so, there in that way you are adding extra one here. So, it will take care of the silica which is uh, getting generated in the blast furnace and that is why it called super flux center. And uh, that will anyway reduce your coke consumption in the blast furnace. So, with basicity 1.6 uh, uh, to no, actually 1 to 1.6, so it is a little long, it is 1 to 1.6 or COSIO2 ratio 0.8 to 1.4, center strength actually decreases in this due to volume change accompanied by phase transformation from beta to gamma dicalcium silicate which results in crack formation during cooling. So, this uh, sort of basicity is, is not desired because due to the formation of uh, gamma dicalcium silicate and this reduces your strength uh, of the center. But if you increase the uh, basicity ratio more than 1.6, or in CAI SiO2 1.4 to 2.8 and this is 1.6 to 3, um, then a glass is formed by calcium silicate or calcium ferrite. So, the quantity of this letter increases with increase in the basicity which enhances the reducibility of the center and the formation of various phases shown in this. So, as we were talking at the basicity, uh, if uh, goes beyond 0.8 and 1.6, your um, strength decreases 
yield also decreases you can see that one so usually that basicity is avoided because tumbler index goes down that these we have talked during the raw material selection. So, basicity somewhere here or in the superflux uh, actually and this is the one where you use it and this gives a good re reducibility uh, to the center. And the various phases which are formed uh, you can see as the basicity in, uh, in increases <coughs> your calcium ferrite and hematite formation actually facilitated. Hematite is a higher oxidase or oxygen state while magnetite is a less oxidized state. So, that reduces. So, in that way it is good in the blast furnace. So, uh, this sort of superflux uh, uh, center are good for reducibility viewpoint or even the strength one. And you can see <coughs> how these phases are appear uh, in the sintering with the time uh, hematite uh, is this one then you have a so hematite is going this you have a felite fel uh, you have a magnetite. So, I think longer you give the duration to sintering more um, magnetite is formed and then uh, you have other phases. In fact, the reducibility of this uh, you can see the degree of reduction uh, how it will affect the reducibility decreases quite high reducibility. Then hemi <coughs> or uh, hematite calcium ferrite uh, this is second lowest one actually is the ferrite where the reducibility is very very low. So, this is in the order of uh, decreasing reducibility. So, mostly you would like to have these uh, phases in the center for the good uh, reducibility and uh, uh, superflux one that we had seen gives these phases quite good. Um, <coughs> the center quality and test uh, uh, I think before uh, that I will uh, this is uh, also another one which we have not talked about the alumina and magnesia effect on the sintering. So, excess alumina makes leg more refractory. So, this is actually not good. So, it reduces the strength and the redu reducibility if it is more than 2 percent. Uh, However, the magnesium content is more resistant towards the reduction disintegration. So, it is good to have this which is due to formation of spinel structure and thus having a higher liquidation and melting temperature. This also increases the uh, uh, cohesive uh, zone becomes narrower and which is required uh, which you want it that uh, uh, cohesive zone should be bit uh, uh, liquid at temperature should become higher. So, uh, melting uh, should occur at high temperature which is a good requirement uh, in the blast furnace and that helps uh, the magnesium here. And uh, um, now, we will come to the center quality um, and test. Uh, so, these we already discussed uh, during the um, iron ore and coke uh, uh, description. Uh, so, not going to re repeat really, but some important one is that uh, reduction under load and softening melting test are important one in, in the center which uh, are routinely carried out to check its quality. Now, there is one problem on this center plant which is given here. So, the example one. So, this says uh, in the center plant, the center mix is uh, moistened while being pelletized on a flying disc before feeding to the center strand. If the mix has 1 percent of water initially and 7 percent uh, water is desired after pelletizing, how many kg of water are required per
per metric ton of mix on dry basis. Also find out the water requirement um, per ton of wet feed and what should be the solution. So, what we are assuming a 1 metric ton of dry mix. So, mix is having a 1 percent water initially and 7 percent that is the one which is uh, coming out. Okay. So, we have a this disc pelletizer the input is 1 percent H2O water and that uh, um, mix and you are adding extra water to get pellets having a 7 percent water in it. So, if the total weight of water in the output stream, so th this we can uh, uh, is a W naught S 2 O if that is the total weight. So, no normal ma mass valence of the water will give um, W naught divided by this and the uh, weight of the water should be 0 0.07. So, if we uh, solve this, so essentially what we get the amount, so 1000 is coming and because we are doing a uh, metric ton basis. Okay. So, the added amount of the water, um, not the added amount, the amount in the output pellet in a 1 metric ton of this is about 75.27. So, now in the feed uh, how much we are mixing we can calculate because it gives a 1 percent is having. So, again in the same way uh, doing the mass balance if weight of the water in the mix uh, feed stream uh, w prime then again the same sort of a mass balance will give you um, 10.1 kg. So, essentially the water which we are adding would be and this 75 minus this because this 10 kg is being carried over with that. So, that gives you about 65.17 kg per metric ton of solid. Now, in terms of wet feed, uh, we, we are already we have put 0.1 and saying 1 metric ton. So, essentially 10 kg of water we have su supplied in the feed, uh, feed is carrying over that much. So, again if we do the mass balance and uh, uh, W naught the way we have defined here to, to weight of the water in the final feed, the fill mass valence will give you now this 10 kg has to subtract it from 1000. So, essentially dry this ore is 990. So, that should give you this much. So, it is coming about 74.51. Similar way we can uh, then calculate uh, uh, if we subtract uh, the one which uh, is coming uh, with the feed the actual amount which should be added is about 64.51 k kilogram per metric ton of wet mix um, and in the previous one it was 65. So, about a 1 kg dif difference which is coming out. Now, we will come to the uh, pelletization as I said this is another uh, name of the granulation we can say. So, it is similar to the granulation as we had discussed in the sintering process. Only difference it uses a particle less than 300 micron size in, um, and in which 50 percent are, are about 50 microns in size to make the green pellet of 12 to 15 millimeter in size. And the next table actually shows uh, the comparison between the sintering and pelletization process. So, if you look at from this table the feed size in sintering is in this range while in pellets is in that range. So, this is the major difference between the pelletization and sintering when we are making the granules. 
mechanism why it does not make much difference except a little. Here as a fuel you use coke breeze, here as oil which is high in cost. Um, <coughs> product size 10 to 25 and here 12 to 16 millimeter. Product shape of course irregular, here it is regular. Angular reforge as 30 to 32, 24 to 26. And this is a, an important thing. Usually, you need a, a low repose angle uh, so that uh, when you are charging in the blast furnace, um, your it could be much flatter the layer, and which is an important thing. So probably we will come about this later. Uh, pipe handling uh, and this of course irregular, not feasible. Feasible bulk density uh, low. This is quite high. Um, and porosity of course, uh, this, in, uh, this is high. Uh, voidage is very good in sintering, not that good. Low iron, you have a high iron here, gang is uh, higher here, but here it is less. High basicity, here is difficult to maintain that, then you have a problem with the strength and other things. Good reducibility, here you have a very good one uh, and that depends on the and your uh, basicity, what sort of basicity you put it. So, this is sort of the basic difference between uh, sintering and uh, pelletization. Uh, in terms of, uh, so most of the points for pelletization comes from iron ore preparation plant, vinification plant, blue dust pocket in mines, iron ore points collected in a steel plant, sludge from a scrubber and points from sizing unit of ore. So, as we discussed to, during our ore section, you do grinding, crushing, so lots of fines are generated. Similarly, in sludge when you are removing the dust uh, up, uh, from the blast furnace covers, you get that. From the steel plant, you collect quite a lot of uh, mill scale and uh, bio basic oxygen furnace, lots of uh, iron fines are generated. So, these all goes to the pelletizing plant. So, following steps are there in uh, pelletization, one is the iron ore preparation. So, uh, naturally because um, many of these feet they do not have the correct size. Um, <coughs> so, you have to do the crushing and grinding and make sure the required size you get it between 100 to 50 micron and these fines are subjected to washing. Uh, to remove the gang material and enhance the iron content in the ore. And it, so when you do the washing naturally, it has to follow the dewatering. And after which, in especially in pelletization, you put a small amount of binder, mostly it is a bentonite, which is a clay based mineral. Uh, about 1 percent or so, you mix it and after mixing you send it to the pelletization plant there for pelletizing unit. So, this is an important difference here <coughs> and so pelletization of what uh, uh, so after this once it goes to the pelletization plant we have already seen how the disc pelletizer work, uh, uh, how is the um, what is the mechanism of pelletizing. Uh, nucleation, transition, then wall gr uh, growth and um, the size is proportional to the feed rate and uh, the water which you are putting, the uh, capillary effect all those come into the picture and we, we have already discussed this in during the sintering in, drum, in granulation. So, same apply to here. But here the difference is the various pelletization unit uh, we have discussed before. So, more or less the same wall formation mechanism apply here. Most popular pelletization units uh, are either disc or drum pelletizer, which were discussed before. And usually you uh, present the result in terms of uh, average size of the pellet, which of course you can define uh, using this formula where n1, n2 are number of balls uh, and DP, DP1, DP2 are the respective diameter of the ball. 
So, no, normal averaging formula by which you can define the average uh, uh, wall <coughs> pellet diameter. Once you get uh, this pellet form, now you have to harden them <coughs> because these are the green pellet does not have much strength. So, it goes to pellet hardening process. Uh, in the previous one it is was going to the sintering one, in this one it is a pellet hardening. So, individual pellet usually they keep their shape in this case. So, it is not the fusion stage. So, temperature is a little lower in this case. So, as you will see the this figure shows the uh, uh, induration machine and in this one you will see it is a quite similar to the sintering machine, but there are many differences. You are um, main different ok. The most popular method to strengthen is thermally treating uh, dam and most popular unit is traveling grade furnace. The important difference is sometimes you are having a up draft. So, the gases are being sucked up from uh, ok from this uh, starting we put it uh, the green pellet comes uh, uh, are feed from here on the uh, traveling strand they come over here and they are subject to the drying uh, uh, first uh, here. So, this is actually the up draft thing gas, gases are being sucked from the top uh, um, and the from the bottom these gases are being supplied and but these gases are uh, the hot gases of about 350 degrees Celsius which are coming from the cooling of the pellets which uh, are at 350 degrees Celsius from the bottom they are then sucked from the top of the suction unit. So, this gives the uh, drying of the pellet. Then they come to the next section where it is a like a preheating of the pellet. So, uh, temperature 350 to 750 degree Celsius zone and here you are having a down drought the way we had uh, in the sintering. So, here suction is applied underneath of the moving grate and these hot air uh, which are coming these are coming actually after induration we will come to that section. So, here it is a down draft before it is a up. So, there is a difference after passing. So, here the same thing is uh, happening much more heating and other associated uh, um, uh, those uh, uh, evaporation and chemically bonded uh, water is going away. Then it comes to the higher temperature zone about 1200 degrees Celsius. When it comes to that one, uh, so with fusion of the thing is occurring and you have a up draft here. So, now before that you had a down draft, now you are having a up draft and the hot cases actually are coming from the rotary kiln. So, these uh, from a, these hot uh, um, pellets they fall uh, they are feed to the kiln where the temperature is uh, quite high about 1200 1270 degree Celsius and from this to this journey the induration of the pellet with fusion of that occur occurs and the change in the phase phases occurs and as I saw in one of the um, slide previously that swelling of the pellet occurs. So, all those mineralogical changes may come and that is why it is necessary to have a proper control of the um, raw material. So, swelling of this should not occur otherwise this will create a problem in the blast furnace permeability. So, once it uh, comes uh, through the kiln the pellet totally are indurated and it comes out uh, and here the cooling is done and when you are blowing the cold air that become uh, hot and that is the one which is used for the uh, drying purpose. 
So, here you can see a little complex you are having a, a down drought and up drought of the air and that is how the induration unit uh, works. Otherwise most uh, and you can see from this figure, uh, figure how the uh, different uh, phenomena are occurring how much time it takes. So, drying about 10 minutes, preheating another 5 minutes and mostly then the firing about 10 minutes it takes and then the cooling. So, uh, these are the sort of steps with uh, similar to the sintering one. So, only the problem you have a combination of down and up draft here. Now, the effect of uh, uh, moisture content that we have seen that time uh, previously. So, we are not going to discuss uh, this, but as we said here finer size when we are talking, we are talking more about the pelletized pellet. Coarser size when we say this is more relevant to the sintering one. Um, now, bentonite uh, when we said as you increase the bentonite you can see the uh, green uh, crushing strength is increased uh, which is actually uh, good, but you cannot use a very high uh, bentonite because it gives a detrimental effect uh, on pellet swelling and increase the plasticity with added slag. So, up to some extent it is fine. Sometime even molasses is also used in place of bentonite. 